Andy we see each other again this year one year yes. after OFC 2024 OFC 2025 is everything about AI what made you excited about OFC 2025 so far well it's actually the 600 gig pluggable modules to, to be clear you know there are a lot of samples and prototypes here but they should be in high volume production a year from now when the the, the silicon the merchant silicon supports it and the ramp is going to be very very fast because you know it, it offers much lower cost per bit it ultimately is better reliability there's fewer lasers and you know the, at least the suppliers believe they can ramp it very quickly so i would be surprised if the 600 gig doesn't dominate the market by the second half of next year in shipments what is in your opinion the main challenge for this 1.6 tera transceiver to be in the market well, see, the, the, the vendors that build silicon photonics today they know exactly how they build them the only difference is speed per lane so the the ramp on the modules is i think very predictable the same capacity they have to assemble the modules the place whether it's 800 gig or 600 gig so i don't think there's a risk factor here to go 1600 you have to go eight channels today it's eight by 200 yes. is it suitable to go 3.2 tera with the double amount no, of channels that is infinitely harder so Uh, there was a lot of talk and panels and even demonstrations of 400 gig modulation so it's easier on the optics domain because you, you can do it with indium phosphide eml uh, thin film libate but on the electrical side the problem is the channel gets so short it's hard to get out of the package and you would need a different kind of connector like co-package copper going directly into a new module connector uh OSFP connector would, will not work well, right? It needs a new system design, and that will take longer. But this, to me, is a 28-29 problem. It's Let's ramp the 20 gig per lane first, mm -hmm. and we can worry about this two years later. We are seeing DSPs with 3 nanometer coming to the market. Very interesting approach. What is your opinion? Are we going DSP or are we going LPO? Well, you're talking 20 gig now or... 200 gig per channel. Yes, so the lowest power is with LPO. How well that works remains to be proven at the system level because what matters is the bit error rate and the, uh, the robustness of the link. Uh, we design our systems to support it, but we cannot say it that it works until we can demonstrate it and the chip is not here yet, right? Um, but we're pretty sure it will work because all the simulations said it will work. Now, uh, the L, all the OCP slots, of course, support DSP optics, LRO, half retimed, and LPO. So people can always use the full DSP, they can plug in CR modules, they can plug in uh, active electrical cable, AOC cable, whatever you want. That's the advantage of pluggable. And in some cases, you know, like say it's a longer haul link, you want to use current light. In other links, you want to use FR4, mix the DR4, FR4. Um, the FR4 doesn't go very far, by the way, it's only about two kilometers, right? Um, but there's the advantage of modularity and being able to use different technologies is obvious. You've been always a big advocate for creating new materials on silicon photonics that can do very fast modulation. Yes. This year, Andy, is all about TFLA. I, Have you seen so many manufacturers of yeah, TFLA? quite a few. They're very excited. Um, on the other hand, the Indian phosphate people can do it too. In fact, one of the funny comments of one of the presentations was, last year they were predicting their bandwidth was 100 gigahertz. This year, the same company is saying we got a new oscilloscope New, new equipment to test it, and it's actually 150 gigahertz. So even a year later, you can still improve the technology with slight design improvement and being able to measure it. So the highest speed measurement devices are finally here, and the bandwidth is actually better. There's actually one company doing silicon photonics at uh, 448, which is unbelievable. Whether that works in production rooms to seen, but people will stretch whatever the technology is to the maximum. Um, in your opinion, if indium phosphate can do it, Indium It's phosphide cheaper. will do it. Well, no, nobody wants to change, right? So the vendors that have an indium phosphide technology base, they will keep pushing that. The vendors that are delivering tin from libate will push that. And the silicon phonics vendors will try to push that, but that's clearly harder. We are seeing also innovations in other areas like quantum dots. What is your feeling about quantum dot lasers? Well, quantum dot is, is a technology that was actually developed 20 years ago, starting to 20 years ago, and it's continuous wave only. It's, you cannot directly modulate it but it does show the best performance at both high temperature and uh, it doesn't have the same failure modes as quantum well lasers. And the reliability is, what I hear is it never fails, right? So it has good reliability, high power efficiency and high temperature. 
Andy, I could talk to you for hours and hours. I just have one more question. If you could ask all these 15,000 people at OFC to research on one particular topic to help the photonic industry, what would be this, this new demand for the next generation of data con telecom but modules? Demand, you mean like demand driver? Yes. Well, AI will use more bits than anything, right? Uh, but it's highly concentrated with the large cloud people and they need the highest reliability, the lowest power, the lowest cost. It's pretty basic, but it really needs a linear interface to get the power down, and that also should improve the reliability, and so on. Andy, thank you so much. I look forward for the next interview next year. Thank you.